Hey guys, welcome back to another video by Fully Informed Trade, or Five Trade for short, knowledge for everyone. My name is Alex Cho, and today I'm just going to talk about the stock market and different stocks within the stock market. For I, so without further delay, let's go ahead and analyze the stocks and the stock index. Dow Jones Industrial Average pulls back on the day session. It pulls back by 2% based upon European fears. The Dow component <laughs> flushed through on the last 30 minutes of the trading session and, and closed the day um, in even worse territory than where it started. Last night I had a negative outlook on the stock market and uh, it played out very well for me because I was long the volatility index. Right now I would avoid JP Morgan and Chase because it is a banking institution. Banking institutions are heavily exposed to the European crisis and throughout economic recession as well. Whenever people lose jobs, lose employment, consumer spending drops, less credit, card is, less credit cards are being used, um, credit is underutilized, and when credit is underutilized, it causes economic catastrophe for banks. Banks are also, especially when you're on the scale of J.P. Morgan and Chase, there's, they are they are exposed to European issues. I'm pretty sure J.P. Morgan and Chase my, ha, will it will be negatively impacted in one way or another by whatever happens in Europe. And from an economic standpoint, from our ec economic standpoint here in the United States, we will be affected domestically through the form of economic contraction and if we get a pretty decent amount of economic contraction that will cause job losses and that will also hurt the loan or the mortgage portfolio that JP Morgan and Chase currently has and let's not forget JP Morgan and Chase is actively involved in trading mortgage obligations with one institution after another and liquidity would dry up in the case of European banks as they are with US banks right now so JP Morgan and Chase is heavily is heavily exposed to a liquidity trap in the MBS market in the case Europe European banks start to lose even more money on their bond portfolios. And also I would avoid owning JP Morgan and Chase. I would sell the stock. I have a strong sell recommendation on JP Morgan and Chase. I'm not exactly sure how much further it could fall. We've seen it fall down to $15 per share in the past. Um, but again, I would avoid JP Morgan and Chase. In my opinion, I would sell the stock. If I owned the stock, I would sell the stock. And I would reconsider JP Morgan Chase from around $20 to $15 per share. Somewhere between here would be a reasonable area to be buying into the financial behemoth again. Because JP Morgan Chase is the best financial stock amongst all the other financial companies but they are heavily exposed to another banking crisis and therefore JP Morgan and Chase will be hurt will be hurting and then, and so will their share price for quite a while now LinkedIn LinkedIn is trading at a really high price to earnings ratio their earning and their net income is only at 15 million dollars their price to earnings multiple is at 1005 yeah, I, I believe it's at around 1,400. And uh, 1,401 price to earnings ratio is what LinkedIn is currently trading at. Based on my expectations and how fast the stock is growing, I think the, a more reasonable valuation would be at 100 price to earnings ratio, which would imply that the stock should be trading at around 4 to $5 per share. So my price target is... 80 is is 95 percent below the current market value and therefore I would sell my LinkedIn stock cut my losses or profits depending on the situation you're in and I would also sell short the stock which I'm going to do pretty soon in fact I might just do it tomorrow and ride this baby lower because this company has opted to become more profitable and by doing so, they're going to spend less money on revenue growth. And with less revenue growth means less growth, and therefore there's no way you can justify a high price-to-earnings ratio 
when they're cutting costs, and when you cut costs, you're not going to earn as much revenue, and when you earn less revenue, and you're still trading at a high multiple, and you've already sacrificed growth, there's no reason why that price to earnings multiple should stay at around 1400 I think the stock could fall by 20, 95% over the course of the next three to five years. I would not be surprised. This stock is way overvalued at $6.9 billion in market capitalization. There's no justification for why anybody should be by paying. There's no justification for any reason. There's, yeah, there's absolutely yeah, none for anyone to buy this stock right now. And in light of the market sentiment, I would really, really avoid this stock. Bad market sentiment, overpriced. The company is aiming to be profitable rather than aiming for revenue growth. All of the wrong signs. There's nothing positive about owning LinkedIn. Let's not forget the stock is shooting below the 200-day moving average, and it takes a long time for companies to recover and trade back above the 200-day moving average. So we're in a longer term downtrend. The cut the company is cutting back costs, which means less net net less revenue growth. Less revenue growth means less net income growth as well, which means that the price to earnings ratio is not justifiable. And from a technical trading basis, the stock is shooting at uh, it's in a downtrend. And there's just too many reasons for me to name off off the top of my head for why you should not buy LinkedIn. In fact, you should just sell short. If if it were me, I would sell short, which I'm going to do anyway. Intel Corporation. Intel Corporation has a tendency of performing very well after a down cycle has gone through. Right now, we're in a cyclical uptrend but now we're going to enter back into a cyclical downtrend. So since we're trading at the upper range of where Intel has been, I would take my profits and run. I have a sell rating, not because Intel is a poor performing company or the leadership doesn't know what they're doing, but because it's a cyclical company. And if it's a cyclical company, chances are when you when you when you go back into a down cycle, Intel is going to get hurt on revenues and net income, and therefore, Intel is going to fall down in price. And I don't want you guys to get hurt. On the bright side, Intel likes to invest a lot of money throughout a down cycle. So throughout that period, Intel will be busy working away so that when we have another economic boom period, Intel will be positioned, ready, and determined to be much more profitable and much more successful. And throughout the down cycle, I'm pretty sure Intel will be trading somewhere between $16 and $13 per share. And that would be a reasonable area to buy Intel stock. But for right now, sell the stock and consider a re-entry later on down the road and buy non-cyclical investments or buy treasury bonds. Research Emotion. This company has been hurt by both the economic outlook but also because they are falling behind in the smartphone wars and in the smartphone arena. Research in Motion no longer has a major place or is no longer considered a major contender. Even at a three price to earnings ratio, considering the economic cyclical downturn we're going into, considering how Research in Motion is no longer as competitive, and because Android and Apple are taking up all of the market share, there's no real room for Research in Motion. I downgraded the stock at $50 per share, around $56 to be exact. And uh, right now, the stock is continuing to fall, and it's currently at $16 per share. It has fallen by around 70% from my original downgrade, and I still have a really, really negative, I still have a negative outlook on the stock. I'm not a value investor. I believe heavily in a balanced value and growth 
perspective. And research emotion is not it. It is not it. Avoid the stock at all costs. I wouldn't be surprised if it continued to fall lower on negative market sentiment, on economic fears, and also because research emotion has lost its place as a market leader in the smartphone wars. Take care, folks, and I hope that helps you. Avoid Intel. Not because Intel is a bad company, but because it's a cyclical company. Avoid research in motion because it lost its competitive advantage and because we are entering into a cyclical downtrend. Avoid LinkedIn because LinkedIn is an overvalued piece of junk paper company. And avoid JP Morgan and Chase not because management is bad, but because JP Morgan and Chase is heavily, heavily exposed to the European debt crisis. Take care, folks. Have a nice one, and I'll see you all tomorrow morning, and I'll go over my macro market analysis. Or when I do go over my macro market analysis, I'll see you guys again. Take care.